Welcome to AM Hour. The soul of AM Hour is to encourage people to communicate. We believe in bridging the gaps with words. We believe in education. We believe in being a citizen of the world and expanding our boundary as a global citizen. In this hour, there will be flaws in our English, but that is not the essence of it. The key things are that we get to communicate, we get to bridge the gaps, and we get to be a global citizen. I hope we can agree on that and enjoy this hour. Job, สวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับ Welcome to AM Hour. It's quite uh, an honor for us that having you this morning. The honor's mine. The honor's mine. Thank you so much. How would you want to uh, introduce yourself in your own context? Because like people know you, like you may maybe like. คุณบรรหารสันโพลิทิเชียนฟอมสุพรรณบุรี but in your own context in your own words who is who is top, top? Would... well top is a dad top is a son top is a brother and top is a husband so overall top is just another person walking the street of Thailand basically I'm you know all these minister all this uh, leader of the party It's just another cap, you know, that we are wearing. Once we take all the hats and all the titles and everything off, um, just another ordinary man who likes to enjoy himself with his family, mm -hmm. with his children, and um, enjoy life really. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you know a time call for for action to work for the country, then so be it. But at the end of the day, you go back home. I'm just an ordinary man walking the street. Mm -hmm. But there are so many sons and dads, but only a few is a son of who was once a prime minister. Indeed, uh, that is uh, one of the privilege and also one of the biggest responsibility um, one needs to have on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. um, there will always be a shadow of my father casting over me. One can never run away from a shadow. So big, you know. He was the prime minister, the 21st prime minister of Thailand, and I don't think anyone could over in politically. No, well, I can't. You can't get in any higher than become the prime, becoming the prime minister. So that shadow will always be casting over me, and um, you know, I'm I'm pretty okay with it. Uh, instead of running away from it, you might as well embrace it and uh, make the most out of it. How did you embrace it? Uh, stop running. And you know, uh, in 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 becoming a politician, many people will have to struggle all the way from you know from the grassroots level, winning the the hearts of the people in the area, and climb up the ladder, which is anything but easy. Being the son of my father uh, gave me the privilege that I didn't have to fight, you know, with 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 my hands and teeth to get to to the certain level. Um, that is a privilege, and the question is. How I will utilize such privilege? Am I going to throw it away, or am I going to climb my own ladder? I mean, since the 23rd of April, um, 2019. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, 2559. When's that? Um, 2016. I'm sorry. When my father passed away. Um, now I'm climbing on my own ladder, and and um, it's going to be how I utilize. That privilege, mm -hmm. and extrapolate my political career. Um, I, I do not deny the fact that being the son of my father, you know, I have this, I have that, but there is also the other side that people tends to overlook: the responsibility that I am carrying around, the expectations that people will have over me. Because oh, his father did this. Why didn't he do that? You know, sometimes we, people forgot the fact that my father spent over 40 years of his life committed, devoted to his work. Um, I've done it full time for the past for well, three years, four years. So I still have a long way to go. The climb is going to be steep, and it's anything like I said, it's it's nothing but easy. But uh, that is, you know, the the pros and cons of being the son of my father. But you seem to be aware of where you are. You have mentioned that it's only been three years, comparing to your father' legacy, like forty years. I'm not making excuse. I make mistakes. Um, I make some advancement, of course. But uh, one needs 
to really aware, be aware of where you stand, where you are. Um, you're here, you're not over there, and you're not way back there. You have to live with the present, with the eyes watching the future, and with your brain realizing what you've done in the past. So the past shall be a very valuable lesson of how you go forward. And you have to go forward very, very prudently, especially at this time and age. Things are very volatile. And, 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 and um, um, to go forward, of course, one needs to have a vision of a newer generation. But one also needs the experiences and the, how should I say, the wisdom from the past. Uh, explain in your own words and your, ex your, uh, your experience that you are fortunate to, to be a son of a prime minister and you have mentioned the word privilege quite often in, a, in the last two minutes that we have uh, started this interview. Uh, how, how would you explain privilege in Thai context? Well, when I go everywhere, people know who I am. Mm. You know, in Supanburi, in my hometown, I would uh, being the son of my father helps me uh, much, much more than, you know, a Mr. A or Mr. B. Oh, this is a son of Kun Ban Han. All right, when he becomes a, a politician, let's choose him because he's a son of his father. Now, that is the biggest privilege in a, anyone's political career. Mm. You know, having the, the publicity, having the uh, announce to the whole province or, pro, uh, or constituents that I'm the son of my father. And people would say, okay, being the son of Kun Ban Han, okay, let's elect him. Now that is, you know, like I said, it's a privilege. But then the drawbacks is, like I mentioned earlier as well, oh, his father did this. Why didn't he blah, 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 blah. You know, his father could do this. Why did he not? Such and such. So uh, one needs to just bite, to, bite the bullet and just get on with it and it takes time to prove to the people that, uh, well, even though I might not be up to the caliber of my father, you know, I don't think I would ever be able to, but, uh, well, I will be able to serve them in a capacity that no one else could. But that takes time and patience. That's the key word, the patience to, to really prove yourself. Um, there's no rush. There is no, no, not the word rush, I'm sorry. There is no shortcut in politics. Well, in life, really, there is no shortcut. Despite the fact that I've got the head start of the others, but such head start also counters the headwind stronger than the others. It's like when you're, you're, you're doing a cycling, you know, when you cycle, you're right at the front. You, you are the first person, but you're the one who takes all the uh, bombardment of the winds, the, 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 you know, the elements that's going to hit you. So um, you need to be aware of, you know, the positive and the negative side and get on with it. All right. I think we are coming to a bit of politics. Of course. You, when we mention the surname Silapa Acha, this is like the surname of politician. Of course. Because like I, I was born and I, I was born when I was a teenager and learning politics. Your father, Kun Ban Han Silapa Acha, is, was the prime minister too. Uh -huh. But in Thai context, they might perceive politician, you know, like maybe the word that they mention is maybe a bit lying, a bit of corruption. Not just in Thai. I think the word politicians, you can translate it into, you know, 200 languages around the world and you still perceive, uh, and, and people in that language would still perceive the word politicians on the negative side. Mm. And, and I think it's just the nature of people. And yet the whole world is run by politicians. I think the question I want to ask is that, okay, people may see politician you know, in a negative way, but you, you are one. And I, from, the, from the vibe that you are giving me, you are proud and it's an honor, duty for you. It is. Can you explain how? Well, the question I would ask when people, you know, turn away at the word politicians, is that what are you going to do about it? If you say politics is bad, if you say politicians are liars, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to elect him? Are you going to not elect him? It's up to you. Okay, you don't have to elect him, but who are you going to elect as your representative? Are you going to elect someone and suddenly say, oh, this person that I elect is a liar? I mean, becoming a politician, does it automatically mean you're a liar? Uh, you know, there's always a black sheep in the herd. There's always a good ones. There was always a bad ones. 
And if you keep on looking at the negative side of a person, then there will never be a good, decent person in in the country, in the world, really. So um, I I also have my flaws. You know, I'm no saint. I'm no god. I'm 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 no purpose of perfect. I have my negative, and I also have my positive. But if the society or if the public at large keep on concentrating on the negative or on the flaws of the people, then what are you going to do with the country? What are you going to do with life? I mean, of course, even the monks, even in the religious sectors, there's always there's also a flaw. There's also some black sheep in 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 the herd. But if you keep on saying that oh it's bad, blah blah blah, you know, same old. I mean, even as we speak now. You know, I'm sure that when it goes on air, there are going to be comments saying that, oh, he's blabbling on, blah, blah. And what are you going to do about it? Are you going to keep on complaining online? Are you going to keep on saying, oh, he's full of beep, that kind of thing? Or are you going to, you know, get out and do something? Not in terms of politics. Are you going to get out and do something for your community? Are you going to get out and do something for your country? Because it's not my country, it's our country. And I decided to walk into the political arena because I want to do something with what I have in here and what I have in here for my country. And if along the way I'm being called bad names because I'm a politician, then so be it. But the question is, what are you going to do about it? More about politics. Uh, one of the topics that being discussed uh, during the younger generation is. You know the word การเมืองบ้านใหญ่ This is another yeah. Thai คำอังกฤษคำ that I, I couldn't come up with specific English word. Maybe you can help we, me out. We use the word patronage system. Patronage system. Patronage, patronage, system. patronage in Thai means ผู้มีอุปการะคุณ Okay. In English, it means like you you have good deeds over someone. It's like someone you owe you something. You help someone. Right? That is kind of a uh, the 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 patronage system. I think that is the core. It is a pros and cons actually. It's a core of the Thai society. We grew up as one big family. You know, go back hundreds of years, even until today. The core of the Thai society is we have one big family: mom, dad, grandsons. I mean, unlike in the Western uh, civilization, uh, at the age of 18, your mom and dad kicks you out of home and you know go and live somewhere else. If you want to live at home, you pay me rent. You know that that's kind of thing that happens in in either in the U.S. or in 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 England when I when I was there, but in Thailand, you live with your parents until you until they die, until you die, or even you know your parents also you look after your your grand your your, your children as well, and that is how our society works. If your neighbor or neighbors are in trouble, you help out. You know we're just like one big family. Even for example, in in Supanburi and in many other uh, you know rural areas. The entire village is like relatives. You, you know, everyone knows everyone. So the patronage system is the core of our society, and you know, it, it it enables us to live as one big happy family. That's the pros of it. Now, the cons of it is that when one gets into the position of the having the authority to do something, now the patronage system can act in a negative way, as you know, oh, you know, you help your people, blah blah blah, that kind of thing. That is also the negative side, but um, in 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 Thai society until today, political under the patronage system still plays a very very big role in Thai society. Maybe maybe not so much in a metropolitan area like in Bangkok, but when you go out into the the, the rural areas, um, as a politician, um, people will come to you for from from you know the water stop running to Uh, I've got diarrhea. Please help me, or um, please can you help my son get into school? Please can you help my father find a job, etc., etc. It's from A to Z. As a politician, of course, the job of a politician is to be in a legislative body. I mean, technical term. You know, you get into the parliament and you do on you know on the legislative side, but in practice, it's never just that. It's always about patronage. You have to be able to help the people, and then the people say, "Oh, this guy is reliable. If this is a go-to guy, if I couldn't think of anything, I go to this guy. He's my go-to guy, so he will be my representative. If I've got zero knowledge, 
about law or, or legislation, it doesn't matter. This is my go-to guy. I will elect this guy. So this is a patronage system, or like you mentioned, Gan Mueang Ban Yai. This is how it is in Thailand. And it will always be like this. But it's not always a bad thing because it keeps the, 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 the ties between the communities is the fundamental value of the Thai society for centuries. But, but should it always be like this? Because like as society goes, uh, Thai society tends to be a bit more Western, Westernized, and, but the politics itself still like stick to this patronage system. Um, Thai people is becoming Westernized only in certain area. We live in a metropolitan, um, the boundaries between neighbors, you know, is becoming clearer and clearer. You live in your house, sometimes you hardly know your neighbor. Now this is becoming more and more westernized, but in a metropolitan area. The lifestyle are different, but when you go out into the rural, about 80%, 70 or 80% people in the rural, even people in the metropolitan, when they go back to their native uh, village or, or, or in, the, in the province, the way of life of people out there is still very much the same as the way it was. Okay, maybe not exactly the same, but it's very much different from what it is in the urban area in Thailand. So there is like two ways of living it, two ways of campaigning, two ways of the political way between in, in the urban area and in the rural area. Even even yourself, you are like a minister and you want to get job done in a lot of things about climate change, especially we have mentioned about it. We, we, we're going to talk, like we're going to uh, spend minutes talking about global climate change. Uh, but coming back to the topic that we have mentioned, this uh, patronage system, this collective society of Thailand, is, it is the way it is. And as you mentioned, it might always will. But... For me, like looking from a journalistic point of view, that is, is quite a problematic as well because like the fact that it's like global upper time and this and that is so many difficult to get things done. I couldn't agree with you more. That's why I said there's always a pros and cons. Now, despite the fact that we have a patronage society since God knows when, since centuries, but in order to move forward, the standard of ethics the standard of uh, of operating needs to be installed. The 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 ethics, I think in Thai is called jariyatam. Okay, but there used to be a subject in school in ethics. There used to be. There's no longer one. I think it is okay to have a patronage system as long as once you get into power, you have the authority to do something you have to have ethics. Of course, people want you to do this. Oh, you owe me this, you owe me that. But uh, such owing, a wise man once told me that uh, the owing part stops when someone asks for it. For example, for example, if I helped you and uh, one day I want you to help me and I, ask, I collect on my debt, say, hey, you owe me. That's the day when such debt is done. So the best way to keep that debt going is not to ask for it back in return. Now, that was a good patronage system. But moving forward, I couldn't agree with you more that as the world develops, new ideas being generated, both good and bad. So whoever gets into the system or gets into the position needs to have ethics, the ethical value in operating, um, be it as a minister, or even at a, at, at, at a, you know at a different level of the provincial level or at the central level, one needs to have the ethical value in doing so. So, from your point of view, and and I'm quite fortunate to 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 get to talk to you because I, I don't think I can find someone so ideal to to ask this question because you are dealing with patronage system itself, you know, like. You, you may be benefited from, from the system itself as well. But at the same time, you have to be the global citizen. You have to deal with like this climate change issue that it needs something to get things done quickly. I can assure you one thing. Now I'm going to get a lot of comments on, 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 on what I'm about to say. Is that over the past 
three and a half years as a Minister of Natural Resources and Environment, never once that I allow the patronage system to affect my work. Until today, um, I've never had a scandal related to do with corruption. Of course, at the end of last year, people would start saying, oh, what about the Department of National Parks? Mm -hmm. Now that was done on an individual basis. Mm -hmm. When I appointed the Director General, mm -hmm. he had a pretty good, good uh, clean, you know, uh, a clean, good opera, uh, profile. So we appointed him. Mm -hmm. But then when things happen, things happen. Mm -hmm. I do not deny responsibility, but uh, the responsibility I took that, you know, we set up all the measures to you know, investigate and to punish those who were involved, then that process still go on. But the work in the ministry, never once that they use the patronage system to run the ministry. And that is how I managed to move ahead as far as I have done today, especially in terms of climate change. Because if using the patronage system, climate change is not going anywhere. Because climate change doesn't really care. Mother Nature does not care about who owes what to whom. It's all about equality. <laughs> when she strikes, she strikes. When there's going to be a flood, it floods everywhere. When there's going to be a drought, everyone gets hit by it. So the work in the ministry, there is no word as such as patronage with the mother nature. Mm -hmm. And that's a good answer leading to the next topic, climate change. Yes. We, have, we have seen so many of your speech discussing this topic. Is it, is it something that you, are, have, you, you have been always interested in? Or is it because your your duty mainly? I must say, when I first started um, in 2019, on the 10th of July 2019, mm. I did have some ideas about you know what's going on with Mother Nature and all that, but I didn't have the in-depth appreciation. Mm. I use the word appreciation because have, having a knowledge about it and appreciate the situation that you're in are two different things. And the more I work the more I see, the more I realize that what I have been, or not just I, but uh, the entire country or mankind have been experiencing in the past decades is a direct repercussion effect of what we did to ourselves. And it, it makes me really worried about how we are going to proceed forward. Because if he continues to operate and, and do things the way he did, that we've been doing for centuries. I don't think mankind is going to last until the next century, not in until year 2100. And that is why I have been pushing very, very hard in all aspects in our ministries. Especially we have the um, ONEP, the Office of the National um, uh, Natural Resource and Environmental Planning, as well as the Thailand Greenhouse Gas Management Organization. I've been pushing them very, very hard over the past two years, two or three years actually. Um, to work under the Paris Agreement mm -hmm. and to make sure that Thailand, you know, make ourselves known on the map of the world that mm -hmm. we are one of the world leader in when it comes to addressing the issue of climate change. Mm -hmm. I mean, last year we, uh, um, I went to sign a contract with the uh, my counterpart in Switzerland, with the Minister of uh, Environment in, in Switzerland, to exchange carbon credit, and in return we would get the funding for um, changing the buses in, in Bangkok from you know, diesel engines into the uh, fully EV. Mm. Now, this is the kind of thing that um, I've been pushing very hard to make sure that it happens because 10 years from now, situations, floods and drought is going to be much, much worse than today. And if you don't do about something about it today, we are leaving all the, uh, the bad stuff to our newer generations. That's not fair. I want I want to spend next minutes talking about climate change, but in a more of like bottom up way. Okay. Not so much of like policy. Um, I I like I, I love London, and I always, if I have time, I always spend, uh, you know, like my my holidays in London, and my favorite activity is cooking there because mm -hmm. it's like it's maybe a bit cold, and when you cook, you have the warm feeling. I used, I used to cook there when I was in London too. Mm -hmm. Terrible one, so but. <laughs> but the point I want to mention is that uh, whenever I cook, I use an application that allow you to put 
your food for the neighbor, for people who also sign in to this application. Whenever I do that, whenever I cook and put it on the application, I feel like this is the, the root of Thai, Thai culture. So you don't have food waste. Yeah. I think um, that's, that's, that's a very well constructive way to, uh, to, to, to combat the climate change. Um, unfortunately, in order to address these issues, the word convenience need to be thrown out of the window. Because, um, well, t I think 20 years ago, when um, the former vice president of the US, the president of uh, Vice President Al Gore, mm -hmm. came out with a documentary called An Inconvenient Truth. Mm -hmm. I think that's, uh, that's a very good way of putting it because the mess that we're in right now, mm -hmm. all these greenhouse gases, all these floods and droughts and everything, what Mother Nature is throwing at us now comes, stems from the word convenient. So in order to really address climate change, mm. that word needs to go out of the window and we have to start living with the word inconvenient. For example, three years ago, we started the campaign of everyday say no to single-use plastic bags. Mm. Back then, it, I was, it was such concept was received with both rocks and flowers. Um, some people agree with it. Some people, you know, uh, argue the fact that I just, you know, spend money in this, in this shop. Now, why do I have to pay for the bag? You know, it's inconvenient to go out of your home and have a, I don't know, a cloth bag or a, a, a thicker reusable bag with you is inconvenient because it's more convenient to leave home empty handed and come home with plastic bags. Now, the funny thing is that when some of Thai people goes abroad, uh, they just follow the rules exactly, you know. Oh, go to the supermarket. You want a plastic bag? Yes, five cents. Okay, I pay, I pay. You can do that abroad. Why can't you do it here? You know, the minute we start to implement such idea, it, it's not the fact that I'm trying to give money to the business tycoons or, or business, you know, owners. It's the fact that I want people to feel that it's a burden to buy bags. You know, I mean, it, why, why don't people think it the other way around? Okay, let's make sure that they all go bankrupt because all these companies, all these shops have spent millions, mm -hmm. you know, making plastic bags to sell to us. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's make them bankrupt. Let's not buy the plastic bags from them. I use my own plastic bags. I'm not going to give you money. <laughs> you know, I've got my own bag, so ha, sus. Why didn't you think it that way? Because it's convenient. Mm -hmm. If you start doing that, it does, when we talk about climate change, we, we don't need to talk about a huge industrial application or something that's way, way too far away from us. Just come back home. You know, climate change, be the change. You don't have to wait for the change. You, us, you know, an individual, be the change. You go home today and start walking around with water bottles. You know, I mean, if you look at it closely, this is not brand new. I've used this for like three or four years now. So now everywhere I go, I would have this bottle with me. Can we stop using plastic bottles, for example? You know, just a simple act that starts at home. Mm -hmm. By the way, it's, it's such a shame of me that while you are bringing your tumbler, <laughs> I order a green tea. So allow myself to apologize to uh, Mother Nature and the younger generation that I need to uh, compromise, that I need some energy to interview. <laughs> The minister. Well, you can, start, a bit of it. you can start by uh, at the end of this, put it into a, a recyclable bin. Mm -hmm. You know, all these plastic, all these straws. Uh, I will. I promise you, I will do that. Thank you. Your file has been done, but I will improve. Thank you. <laughs> but in your position, the best that you, you are the best one that can describe how bad things are, and if we continue doing the same thing that we are doing now. How will, let's say, Bangkok, my hometown, Nakhon Sawan, or your hometown, Supanburi, will be in terms of climate change? And what is the ideal way? If you are like, if you are, let's say, you are like the god and you can fix anything in this country or in this world, two questions, how bad it, it is going to be and how to fix it? Well, first question, how bad it's going to be? It's going to be pretty, pretty bad. Two years ago, um, I remember it in November two years ago. It was the first time ever that the, when there was the, um, the high tide coming in and Chabria River rose, it went over the, uh, the, the, the wall, both sides of the rivers in Bangkok. 
and it actually flooded um, you know, the banks of Chapaya River in Bangkok. Um, in the past, this never happened before. Okay, there might be some wet, some some minor flooding on the you know on the direct vicinity, direct bank from the Chabra River, but two years ago it was the first time ever that the water level rose over and overflowed the 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 the, the wall that was used to guard against the, the high tides. It only signifies that the sea level is getting higher and higher. Then the question becomes, what happened ten years from now? how high it's going to rise, because at the rate that it is going, the polar ice cap is melting more and more. Now, when we talk about polar ice cap in Thailand, it's, it's like a gazillion miles apart, but it actually affects the Chao Phraya River when there's a high tide coming in. Drought, how bad is it going to get? I mean, for the past two or three years, Thailand have been experiencing the La Nina cycle. From now on, the next government will be dealing with El Nino's. We're going to be dealing a lot with drought. How bad it's going to get 10 years from now? Mm -hmm. That's why I said tide is, um, the, the flood's going to get worse. The drought is going to get worse. Now, we have been living in this situation for decades, for yonks. And if it's like water level is right up here now, are we going to let it you know, go all the way over our head? Or are we going to do something about it now? That's how severe the situation is. Now, if I can do something, about it, what am I going to do? Of course, whatever we are going to do, it will affect people. It will change the way of life of people, not for a, 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 a brief period of time, but it's going to completely change, permanently change the way of life of people. Now, unfortunately, whatever change we are doing just in Thailand is not going to be enough because Thailand, on the scale of uh, greenhouse gas emission, we are number 19 on that scale. We produce about less than 1%, about 0.8% of the global greenhouse gas level. We produce about that much. But unfortunately, on the other scale, on the effect side, when Mother Nature hits, we are one of the first 10 countries in the world to get hit by Mother Nature. So it's not fair. And whatever we do in Thailand alone will not be enough to save us from Mother Nature. But that make no mistake, that is not the reason that we should sit on our hands and knees and do absolutely nothing about it. That is why in the international arena, we've, I've been making speeches everywhere. I've been shouting to the whole world, to the developed countries, to the US, to the EU, Russia, India, China, to say, to do something about it. Because the mess that we are in right now comes from them. Because the developed countries, at one stage, they were developing countries. And when they were developing countries, they were producing all this junk into the atmosphere, into the mother nature. So now they've gone past this stage and now they're about to turn back and tell us that, oh, don't do this, don't do that, no, that is not fair. So I'm <clears throat> shouting at the international stage, imploring them to do something about it. Not just saying blah, 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 but to do something about it because the mess that the world is in right now comes from them. And um, now we are being hit by it. So please help us. Like I said, it's, it's uh, fortunate for me that I get to ask you directly. Also another uh, requirement to this program is to put Thailand on a global stage because you are putting yourself, you volunteer yourself to be the leader of this country. Mm -hmm. And we have a chance to discuss politics and Thailand in English. Mm -hmm. Basic, uh, simple question. In your vision, Thailand on a global stage, how do you see it? We are very lucky to be born on this piece of land. We are very lucky to be under the patronage of the, the monarchy institution that we have in Thailand, the Chakri dynasty. We are very lucky that we have everything that we need. So from now on, Thailand really learns, really need to learn how to stand on our own feet. We do have abundance of natural resources on land, in water, everywhere. We need to learn to utilize that properly. Stop hurting the mother nature, learn to stand on our own feet. We have the local wisdom to make sure to go forward. We have the wealth and we have to turn that wealth into the opportunity. I will make sure that Thailand stands on the global stage 
and we will be second to none in terms of the opportunity. We have to make sure that all the people in Thailand, in all generations, General X, Y, Z, M, and everyone, everyone sees such opportunity and grasp it, and everyone will be having such opportunity to grow. And in order to develop and push Thailand forward, we also need to leave no one behind. So we need to go together. That is the fundamental of our policy, the wow. Thailand is wealth, opportunity, and welfare for all. And that will put Thailand on the global stage under the concept of sustainable country for all generations. That's how we're going to do it. So you see, you see the, uh, Thailand as sort of like uh, the land where we are fortunate to have this abundance of food Very. and natural resources. Very. And we have to make sure it stays that way and let's take care of our mother nature so that we still have the richness in our soil, in our land, and in our water. Allow myself to arrange. This is a tradition of this program to okay. play a bit of a game. Okay. And we have a game about, uh, in English, it's a secondary province, but I think, again, I have to say it in Thai, Mueang Rong. Of course. The reason I'm choosing this game for you is that Supanburi was once a Mueang Rong, and you know, like we probably still are. <laughs> <laughs> We're a small province. That's up for the debate. But uh, like it, as as we witness, your 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 family has done so much for Supanburi and has become a prominent city now. But right now, you are a candidate of the country. So what we are doing now is that we have the name of the city in Thailand. Okay. Mostly secondary city. Okay. Pick one and in your own in your own vision how to make this city more prominent, more stand out. Okay. Make Mueang Long become Mueang Lak. Okay. Okay. So All this right. is a game. I hope you don't have Supanbri in here. It will be easy for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nong Kai. Wow. <clears throat> it's a wonderful province. I've been there quite a few times actually. Mm -hmm. It's on the border. Is on the Mekong uh, River Banks, right opposite our neighbor. Um, <clears throat> this this province is abundance with natural resources. It's right on the bank of the Mekong River, one of the most legendary river in the world, I think. And tourism industry, I think, um, one of the most important aspect of secondary provinces is how you can keep the way of life of people the way it is now and not being overwhelmed by the force of uh, development. Because what I've realized, Supanbri at one point, um, I argued with my dad, I said, dad, why, why don't we have like big signposts, you know, like commercial signposts make Supanbri more advanced and that kind of thing. And my dad said, no, I'll keep it the way it is. Keep the way of life of people like this. Um, we do not have big industrial estates in Supanbri. We keep it the way it is. And I didn't understand why until now. Because at, at the moment, amidst the stream of development and the globalization and everything, it is so difficult to try to keep the way of life of people the way it is right now. It's the core of Thai society. Don't lose ourselves. And that is how you will attract people. That's how you will attract visitors into your province. And when you have visitors coming to your province, local economy, you know, the cash flow and everything that goes on in your, in, in, in your province automatically developed. People want to see, especially after the COVID-19, the post-COVID-19 period, people want to explore the world once again. And when they explore the world, for example, when, when us, when we go to Japan, we are not going to eat Thai omelette. We are not going to eat, uh, you know, uh, uh, minced pork with basil or kapao gai or something. We're not going to eat that. We want to eat Japanese food. I mean, I remember I went down south to Kot uh, Lipe, uh, only to find a lot of burger shops there and donuts there. I, I absolutely haven't gotten a clue why, you know, I would, my, the visitors were traveling halfway across the world to come to this beautiful island of Lipe and eat hamburger. They might as well go to McDonald's in their own home. So what I'm trying to say is a province like Nong Kai, you have the most precious thing in your province. You have the locals, you have the way of life, 
you have the association with our neighboring countries, with Laos, who can speak almost exactly the same language as we do. That is one of the biggest uh, advantage. So keep the way you live as it is. Now, the important part, though, when you keep everything the way it is now, you don't keep thinking the same old way. You have to change the way you think. One of the things that we did in Supanbri that my father tried to do, and I'm trying to do as well, is to change the way people think, to be more committed to the public, for the public cause, not every man for himself. Uh, you have to start thinking about what we're going to do for your province. You install these ideas into the newer generation, into the schools, make the education become the core of your province while maintaining the way of life and understanding how the world is evolving. The concept of circularity, bioeconomy, as well as the green economy, the BCG concept, how are we going to inst install it into the Nongkai province? And yet, we don't need a skyscraper in Nongkai. We don't need a McDonald's in Nongkai. We need a local mom and pop shop there to make sure that people attract into the province. And I think that's how you can develop and while at the same time, keep the way things to keep the way things are, the way things are. No, oh, thank you very much. Another, another game. Okay. I think I promised to the audience that I will do this to every candidate. Okay. Despite the answer that you will be giving me, the first two guests of the show is Kun Tim and Kun Ung Ying. Okay. I ask them to pick the party they want uh, to be here next. Nah, 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 nah. It's a bit tougher. Uh, they want to work with the party they would rather not working with. And the last one is the one that may be up for the future. So, so now I have to pick who I want to work with? Yeah. Oh, actually, I have, it depends on who will be willing to take on my ideas, actually. <clears throat> um, personally, I don't have, um, you know, uh, anything against all the political parties. The most important thing is that after the election, <clears throat> I mean, we are not a big party. So the choice of choosing, you know, the, 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 the luxury of choosing is not with us. We will be chosen. So in order to make a decision to join, to work with any of these political parties, depends on who is willing to take on my policy, our policy, the policy that we have been <clears throat> listening, not just to the local people, but to the international communities. Um, the wow Thailand policy that we came up with is to ensure that Thailand becomes a sustainable country for all generations. Now, who will be able to take a lot of big chunk of my policy and integrate it into the government policy? That's the party I will work with. So um, I really don't have any quarrels with any of them. Pum Jai Thai, I'm a very good friend with Kun Anutin. Kun Tim, oh, well, you know, we just sat together in the previous debate. Um, Democrats, I know a lot of people in the party. Um, uh, Kla, Kun Gon, despite his height, uh, we talk, you know, <laughs> at the same level con constantly. Um, uh, Rom Thai Sang Shad, well, I work with the Prime Minister every day at the moment. Um, Palang Pashalat, well, I still see the leader, you know, uh, General Prawit, every week. Um, thai Sang Thai, oh, um, Kun Ying Sudarat, she is also, you know, a very old colleague from since my father's time. And <clears throat> especially Pe Thai, you know, Kun Ung Ying, she's a, you know, very promising, has a very promising future. And um, the entire party has one of the strongest stereotypes in Thailand. So um, I have no problem working with them. It's just a matter of who will be able to take my policy and then integrate it into their policy the most. Then I'll be working with them. Thank you very much. Of course, no problem. Yeah. Be yeah. honest, mine. It's always fun. Yes, yes, yes. I want to, I mean, we talk about politics and country. I, I save myself a bit of time, maybe five minutes to ask, to, to, to ask you the question, uh, something a bit personal and family matters. And I asked you this because I want to learn it from you as well. I've watched your interview and there were a part that you mentioned about your father, and there was a time that there was like a, a, hi a hiatus, uh, the absence that you didn't talk to him much. Oh yeah, when I got married. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was a good, I was a good son all the way until I got married for three. Well, we we didn't talk for three years. 
I think that happens a lot to pe people my age and my background and your background, like Thai Chinese family sort of stuff. Oh, yes. I have a lot of friends, including myself, that there are times that we are distanced from our parents, mm -hmm. the loved one. Mm -hmm. what, what did you learn from that three years? And did you regret not talking to him for three years? And well, it, gave, it, it taught me a lot of things, actually. Um, but now that I'm also a father myself, and now that I'm following my father's footstep, I realize how much, uh, how much love my dad gave me. Now, unfortunately, being a typical Chinese-born person, my father has, I mean, different people have different ways of expressing love to their, to their children. Um, my father has a pretty hard way of expressing how much he loved me, but now, today, now that I'm working where I am, I just suddenly realize, my goodness me, how much sacrifice he has made in, in, in raising me until to where I am today. Um, well, I regretted the fact that uh, well, I didn't talk to him for three years. Um, unfortunately, if you ask me if they go back, will they do the same thing that I did? I still get married to my wife. Okay, I mean, when a man's going to get married, one's going to get married. Okay, unfortunately, um, uh, the part that I didn't talk to him for three years, uh, I wish I could change that. I wish I could express my appreciation to him more. You know, I don't want to say thank you to him when he's gone. I mean, now I'm saying thank you to him with his statue. I don't even know if he can hear me from up there. But uh, I wish I could say thank you more often. And I wish I could say I love him much more often. Um, but uh, you will never understand this until you become a father yourself. My father, taught, my father told me that. He said, one day you'll know how much I love you. And said, oh, you know, back then. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. But now... Everything that he said is well couldn't be any more true, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and I, you know, I can only beg everyone to really. I mean, I thought I don't think there is any father that doesn't love his mm -hmm. son, especially when you are the only son. I'm the only son, and I'm the youngest. Um, every father loves his son, and it's just different father will have different way of expressing how his love to his sons. And let's hope that you don't learn how much of that love when he's gone. I wish that everyone would have the luxury of saying goodbye to their father on, on his last day. I didn't have that luxury. I was away when my father passed away. And I wish I could say goodbye to him. And I wish I could say thank you to him. But I only wish that all the sons would have time. I mean, you might have a fight with your dad right now as we speak, but Believe me, at the end of the day, there is no one wanting the best in the world for you other than your dad. That's what I can say. In, in your case, uh, you have mentioned that you, you're now working as a politician full time. Yes. And you learn more that your father loves you so much. I assume that he has done so many to, to, to lay the background for you. And can, can you tell me, like, uh, what did you learn that, okay, wow, this is he's already gone and wow this is what he done even when the time that you don't talk to each other tremendous amount of efforts that that he has made to make sure that i am not being attacked along the way when i was growing up um, i didn't have a very enjoyable teenagerhood you know i didn't go out partying you know crazy partying um, he was very strict I didn't, um, you know, when I was growing up, when I was the early days as a, an MP, my father wouldn't let me involved in any of the, uh, how shall I say, um, when there's come to reshuffle of the politician, um, uh, civil servants or something, you know, he never asked for my comments. Um, or when there was some, some, some work in the province or something, he would shield me away from everything. I didn't understand why. Until today, my father, you know, why you never ask for my comment? Why you never listen to my advice? Why you never listen to me? And now I, I realize that he has been shielding me from all the possible traps that could lay ahead, whatever that was. And now as a minister and as a politician, 
um, I think I have a pretty clean sheet so far, and that could be very difficult if my dad was not so strict. I didn't understand it back then. Mm -hmm. I do now. Um, my father was very strict how I grew up. I didn't understand when that back then. I do now. Um, and 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 you know he he never said how proud he was of me, but the way he asked everyone to say, please look after my son. You know, it's, it's getting back to me now. And I, I was just like sat there kind of gobsmacked, kind of speechless of, wow. You know, so a few people would come up to me and say, hey, Top, you know that your father came to me and said, please look after my son, okay? I was like, wow. That's why I said, I, if I could go back one thing in life that I could do, I would get asked for just a chance to say goodbye to my dad on the 23rd of April 2559, 26, 2016, I think, uh, to say goodbye to him and said, I love him. Mm. Impressive how you can uh, call the date exactly anytime oh, yes. I, I, we ask a question about it. Around 4 a.m. to be give or take, something like that. Yeah. Mm. Thank you for your, your answers. And I, I know you didn't mean to advise me, but there was a big lesson for me and a lot of people to, to keep connecting with parents. Is it, as, as a dad and also as a son, I can assure you, no one, and, and I mean absolutely no one in this world, will love you more than your parents. And you might not think it now, but when they're gone, looking back at it, well, most of it is true, actually. Don't wait until that day. Don't make the mistake I made. Yeah. Do it now. Yeah. Tell your parents, tell your mom, tell your dad you love them. Despite the fact that you had a fight yesterday or whatever, mm -hmm. tell them right now. Because, because um, you know, time goes just like that and you never know what's around the corner. Forrest Gump said, life is like a box of chocolate. You never know what you're gonna get next. That kind of thing. So you never know when you're gonna hit the rough patch. Do it now. Say you love your dad. Say you love your mom. Don't wait. Uh, I guess uh, after election, it's about time I, I take a holidays and visit my father in Nakhon Sawan. Well, but if you have time this afternoon, just pop up there. Don't wait until <laughs> after the election. It's way too long. Way too long. If you ask me, you have time, just get a car. Go there now. Uh, one last tradition for this program is that the fact that we are having a conversation in English, despite my English, isn't perfect. Oh, no, 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 no. Everyone's English is communicable. There's no such thing as perfect. Well, uh, let's talk a bit about my show. Have you seen a bit of the content of that we some, have we done? Some, some. It's been very entertaining. Uh, very, uh, it's very different, you know. And and um, uh, persons you have invited. That's why I said it's also my honor to be here in 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 your show this morning. And uh, well, I'm sure it'll be a good one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I want to ask you this, not because I want to mention other candidates, but I want to understand your view about English as a second language in Thailand. Uh, may, you may have seen the viral video of Kun Ung Ying and people criticize her of using, you know, like, and I'm going to do it right now, it's Thai Kam and Grit Kam. Because it's so difficult to explain that in, in English, like Thai Kam and Grit Kam. Uh, what's your thought on that? It depends on who you're talking with. Of course, if you're talking with amongst the Thai people, you know, I'm, I'm the kind of, I, I don't use one Thai, one English. If I'm going to go English, I go English. If I go Thai, I go Thai. And I, I would make myself very clear. I mean, I've got a, um, a certificate from the, uh, um, the, the, the public relations department, you know, as a public announcer. I've got a certificate for that to yeah. prove that actually my Thai is also uh, well, pretty clear. So I would speak English or Thai, but then again, that's me. Different people will have different techniques. It doesn't mean that they or whoever is right or wrong. It's just a different way of one feels comfortable in communicating. Mm -hmm. uh, if one is in a crowd of mixed of Thai and English, they might feel more comfortable speaking in mixed you know, vocabularies, you know, the crowd, I might understand it, some might not, then that could be talking amongst the crowd. Uh, but when that person is in a total foreign community, 
it might be complete English, you know, and, and, and it is, uh, I think it's just a different style and different techniques people use to communicate with the others. That's all. In your opinion, especially because you, uh, like I said, you are son of Kun Ban Han, and if I don't recall it wrong, I don't think he, his English isn't, isn't like native. His, his well, his English is terrible, but he dares to say it. Uh, I mean, he until he's, he he passed away at the age of almost um, eighty four, about eighty three and eight uh, and seven months. Um, until his death, he was still having an appointment with his English teacher. He still studied English. You know, his English wasn't good. Well, uh, and and um, but he just wanted to say it. Good morning. How are you? In the Thai way. But the most important thing is that. To, to speak English, you need courage. It doesn't matter right or wrong. I just want to say it, you know, and, and that's the charm in it. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter if your English is good or bad, but you make an effort to communicate in the way that they could understand you. I think that's, it shows a sincerity in, in the means of communication. Uh, the reason I brought that up, and didn't mean to like just bring your father in English, but uh, the question is that, do you think is Necessary is required for a prime minister in this era and time to to speak English well. It would be a plus. It would be a plus. Of course, having certain skills, having extra skills, be it English or the fitness. You know, you can be a really fit, like uh, uh, Governor Chachat. You know, he wakes up and go on a run. I mean, I can't even run a kilometer without having a heart attack, probably. But having an extra set of skill as a leader is always a plus. Is it a requirement? Is it a must? I don't think so. It would be good, but it doesn't mean that if this guy can't run 10 kilometers, he can't be a leader. Or if this guy can't speak English, then he can't be a leader. It, 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 like I mentioned earlier, there's always an assistant. There's always a tool to help you out in all occasions. When you become the leader, you have all the facilities and all the the uh, you know the tools and everything at your hand you can use. I mean, let's say if I go to um, I don't know Czech Republic and their leader doesn't speak English and I don't speak Czech, that would have to be an intermediary to to translate. So so what? You know, as long as the two leaders understand. I mean, uh, the only country in the world that we wouldn't need a, uh, a translator is when we go to Laos. You know, we speak almost exactly similar language. That's that's it. So, is it a plus? Yes, it is a requirement. Um, I, I I don't feel it is. No. And I think this is the point of this program because we want to encourage people to to communicate. Actually, like even in Chinese, Japanese, any language, communication is best. Exactly. And yeah, I want you to share from your perspective. You you get to uh, volunteer yourself to be the country leader. You get to spend time in the UK. How important it is to to have that courage to speak in English. It doesn't matter right or wrong. Just say it. You know. I also have a uh, you know learn a bit of French. You know, je parle français aussi un petit peu. That kind of thing. My French is terrible, but just say it. You know, if you are afraid to speak, no one would understand you. If you are afraid to convey your message in any language, how could your counterpart understands you. Right or wrong, it doesn't matter. Just say it. Have the guts to do so. And, and, and you know, you would be surprised how your effort is, will be welcomed by your friends or your colleagues who doesn't speak Thai. Just similar to, just, just imagine yourself meeting a foreigner and he tries to speak a terrible Thai to you. How does that make you feel? You make, you, it makes you feel like, oh, wow. This person is making an effort. You, know, you feel proud that he's trying to speak our tongue. I think the same thing goes the other way. And uh, just have that feeling in yourself and just say it. Right or wrong, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter. You know, good English, bad English, just say it. As long as you can communicate and get your idea across, that's all about communication. There is no such thing as perfect English. I don't believe that. I just believe that I believe in a perfect communication. I can speak a terrible English and I can deliver my message exactly how I want it. It's better than I speak a perfect, a really, really good English 
and I couldn't communicate my ideas over. Then what's the point of communication? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Save Kapanin. myself some time to put this in a recycle, upcycle bag. <laughs> Thank you very much. We actually have uh, our environment journalist, and she used a, a tumbler, and it's all scratched out. It's like ten years old. Good. And very good. Yep. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. โหวตเพื่อไทยปะล่ะโหวตก้าวไกลปะล่ะโหวตภูมิใจไทยปะล่ะ